Hi everyone, this is uh, Anuj. I'm a senior product manager at Amazon, and I'm uh, here to introduce Amazon Augmented AI for the human review of ML predictions, and we have the honor of having Ripcord with us over here as well. Quick introductions, um, I mentioned I'm Anuj, I'm the product manager on the team. We have with me over here Michael Shim, who is a senior manager on the team, and Kevin and Vaseem from Ripcord as well. Uh, Quickly going into the topics we will be covering for today. We are going to be talking a bit about what is the current state of machine learning and how customers are using it. We are going to cover a bunch of use cases where human and AI are coming together to solve the customer problems. I'm gonna to be touching about what is A2I, how it is useful, and um, we will also get an opportunity to hear about the Ripcord document processing use case. In the end, we will leave approximately around 10 minutes or something for Q&A uh, to answer any questions you guys might have. Uh, moving into the current state, like, uh, so first of all, what is machine learning? Machine learning is a set of algorithms that can learn by example. So if you give an algorithm, let's say 1,000 images, telling them what is a dog versus a cat, the algorithm can then learn to predict on a new image that it has not seen previously that a dog or a cat is present in an image or not. And customers are infusing machine learning in a lot of applications these days, and rightfully so. Machine learning handles a lot of use cases with high speed and low costs. Uh, but inherently, machine learning gives a probabilistic output. So it's going to tell you that the machine learning model is 80% confident that a dog is present in this photo, or it's like 50% confident that the dog is present in this photo. And the low confidence machine learning results still need a human review. Whenever the machine is not confident, you want a human to come in and review what was the actual data or inference or what was the result that was actually present in the uh, image or document or whatever kind of object you are running into. So today, uh, customers are kind of forced to choose machine learning only workflows or human only workflows. Both of, their, both of the workflows have their own advantages. Uh, machine learning workflows are highly scalable, low cost uh, to deploy. But humans uh, have an intuitive sense of what is the right decision whenever there's a nuanced decision making that needs to happen. Uh, customers are actually looking for machine learning and humans to be working together for a number of use cases. They want to use machine learning as the first pass and wherever the machines are not confident, they want the human to come in and pass on the uh, judgment and review the data that machine was not confident on. And we are seeing it across a number of different use cases. So things ranging from image moderation to data extraction to support scenarios to payment processing to um, monitoring your models or monitoring uh, any other ML application that you have or classifying the documents. There are a number of use cases where customers are currently wanting to use ML and human judgment together. Let's look, up, uh, let's look at a few of these use cases uh, that we have heard from customers come up over again and again. So the first one um, is media analysis. Like Customers are using machine learning models to uh, identify what are the objects present in this video, or um, what is the kind of, um, let's say, key message of this video. But they want humans to come in and take that intelligence at the next level, like what are the emotions present in this video? Or is this video a tutorial, or is this video a testimonial? Uh, so there are a lot of use cases where in the media analysis space where customers are using humans and machines together. Another example is generating the subtitles of a video pretty accurately. Another use case we have seen over and over again, uh, and customers have told us, is the document processing. Uh, taking an example of an invoice type of document, customers really want highly accurate data extracted from these kind of documents. Because even if a single digit in, let's say, the supplier number on the document is wrong, the payment might be going to a completely different entity and nobody wants that. And similarly, it's the scenario with extracting social security number, tax numbers, VAT numbers, and anything that needs to be highly, highly accurate for any downstream workflows. 
We are seeing similar things in the image moderation or the content moderation scenarios as well. Uh, platforms where the user-generated content is uploaded, those companies, those networks, they want to keep their platforms really safe for their audience. Uh, so they want machine learning to take a first pass at millions and millions of images that are, are videos that are uploaded on their platform. But where machine was not able to make a good enough decision or a high confidence decision, they want humans to kick in and provide their judgment. And kind of making the situation even more complex, the content guidelines, the moderation guidelines can vary a lot by region and geographies. And there's a lot of nuanced decision making that needs to happen over here. Another interesting use case that we have seen from customers and customers have been telling us is like around monitoring their machine learning models. So customers want to make sure like their models are performing as expected. And they want to actually know how their models are performing. So they want to randomly send like 10% or 20% of the ML inference for a human to review. And then they want to compare the human output to the machine learning output and then actually see how their ML models are performing. And this can be really useful to kind of build trust within your own teams on how your ML is performing. And you can be sure that your models are performing as you expect them to be. And you can also catch any data deviations that might be happening in the input data itself altogether. Now, we talked a bit about like customers want humans and machines to be working together. But we, what we have also heard from the customers is that it's really difficult to combine humans and ML together in the same workflow. And there are multiple reasons for that. In order to build any machine learning and human workflow, you first of all need a wide variety of talent. You need machine learning scientists, you need engineering teams, and you need operations teams to manage a large number of reviewers. Let's say you get all the talent and you are able to hire all the people that you need to build this kind of a system. After that, you need to spend the time and effort to actually build and maintain the system. You have to write your own custom software, you have to write your own uh, custom UIs that the workers can work on. Even if you do all that, customers have been telling us that it's very difficult to achieve high accuracy on the human review tasks. So we heard this feedback from the customers and we launched Amazon Augmented AI, which is a new service uh, that was launched um, on Tuesday over here. So what is Amazon Augmented AI? With Amazon Augmented AI, you can easily implement human review in your machine learning uh, workflows. And it takes the undifferentiated effort that developers have to do away from them and really provides them a simple mechanism to loop in or to bring in the human review in any of their ML applications and any of the workflows as they need. And this saves up a lot of developer time and your business time to focus on the business problem that you are actually trying to solve rather than doing this undifferentiated heavy lifting. Now, let's see what are the, some of the key benefits that um, uh, are of A2I. Uh, the first one I kind of touched upon is, it's really easy to implement human review in your machine learning workflows. The second one we see is like, you can really put your models into production uh, very fast. You, the time to market of your machine learning models is greatly reduced. The reasons for that are no, uh, three. Like first, we provide you pre-built workflows, so you can directly uh, click, 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 and start using them. We provide you over 70 different templates to choose from, depending on your use case. And thirdly, even if your model is, let's say, not up to your highest expectations, you can put it in the production, knowing that there's a human backstop to catch the low confidence results of your ML model. Another benefit we see is the flexibility of using multiple workforces. And we will be discussing that in a bit more detail um, as we go in the presentation. Another key benefit that we see of A2I that you can get is uh, you can integrate A2I or human review in essentially any machine learning application or any custom ML model that you have built. 
A2i is pre-integrated with Amazon Recognition, which is the image analysis service of uh, Amazon. And it's also integrated with Amazon Textract, which is the document processing service of Amazon. But in case you are not using those services or if you have any custom use case, you can directly use A2i with any of your custom machine learning uh, use cases as well. And then the fifth benefit or the fifth key benefit that we see is providing highly accurate results. So A2i uh, provides answer consolidation algorithms that can take answers from multiple reviewers and consolidate it into a single answer that you can directly use in your workflows if you want. Touching a bit upon the workforce options uh, that we discussed a bit previously. Now, Amazon A2i is not only providing you the software and the plumbing to manage your workflows, it also provides you with the human workforce options that you can choose from. So the first option is something called as uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk. It's an on-demand, 24-7, globally distributed workforce of over 500,000 independent contractors. Uh, you can send your tasks to them, uh, and you can get the results back really quickly. But in case you have really sensitive data and you want to keep your uh, data within your own organization, you can use the second option that we have, which is a private workforce. You can onboard your employees as simply as entering their email addresses on Amazon A2i platform. Uh, you can also use any of the operations teams or data teams or third party contractors that you might already be working with right now. The third option uh, in terms of the human workforce is the vendors. These are the AWS marketplace vendors that uh, Amazon A2i team has gone and sourced out so that you guys don't have to do this work. Uh, they have already gone through a number of security and quality checks to even be listed as an Amazon A2i vendor on the marketplace. And to use the vendor workforce option, you can just directly subscribe them with a few clicks on A2i console or on the marketplace uh, website as well. Now, we were really fortunate to work with a bunch of private beta customers um, to help us define the product, give us feedback um, over the past two, three months. Uh, we worked a bunch with Ripcord, and uh, we are fortunate to have them over here to discuss their use case in the uh, second half of this session. The second one we worked with was T-Mobile. And T-Mobile uh, is one of the largest carriers in the United States. And they cater to over 84 million customers uh, all over the place. Now, they are using machine learning to really improve the experience of the end customers by making sure their customer support agents have the right information at the right time to help the customer who's on call or who's on chat with their support agents. And they are using machine learning and A2I to do that. And as Heather really uh, points out over here towards the end, that trust is a really difficult thing to build when it comes to machine learning. And with Amazon A2I, they will be able to make sure that their models are making the fewest mistakes possible. Another customer uh, that we worked with is Vidmob. Vidmob is a video creation and analytics platform. And they use machine learning to analyze uh, terabytes of data to identify the attributes uh, from the video ads. And using Amazon A2i, they have been able to put their models into production, or uh, they have been able to increase the speed of their models to market by 3x. Another customer we worked with uh, is National Health Services, Business Services Authority. It's a, a public health organization in uh, UK. And they provide payment services to a lot of uh, people in UK. They process over 50 million documents per month as a part of its payments processing pipeline. And with A2i combined with Amazon Textract, which is one of the pre-built integrations that we support, they will really be able to harness the power of humans and machine learning together. And in a medical payment space where the human judgment is often required and preferred, they will be able to use A2i for the human judgment part of things as well. 
and they are really excited about A2I because they will be able to take advantage of machine learning while still applying the human judgment. And that's really a game changer for um, national health services. Now, let's see how actually Amazon A2I works uh, in principle. So the first thing that you do as a customer or, or as your application builder, you, your client application sends input data into your machine learning model. Now, this could be your custom machine learning model, or this could be Amazon AI services like recognition or text tract. Once the machine learning model has made a prediction, two things could happen. Either the inference or the prediction of the machine learning model could be highly confident. In that scenario, you can directly use that prediction in your client application downstream. In case the prediction was not uh, of high confidence and it was actually low confidence as per the business rules defined by you for your use case, an A2I workflow can automatically click in. So we automatically will send the low confidence predictions for human review. We will get the results from multiple people. We will consolidate it into a single answer. We will store the result back into your S3 bucket which you can then consume directly in your client application as you see fit. Now, with that, I will call my colleague uh, Mike to explain a bit more into detail on how actually you can use Amazon A2I. So let's talk about how to use uh, Amazon A2I. So the first step you wanna do is you wanna define a human review workflow. And as part of defining a human review workflow, uh, there are three things you need to set up. The first one is you need to specify when uh, you're gonna send your, um, your inference to a human to review. And then secondly, what the human uh, will be reviewing, what they actually do and what the review task looks like. And then finally, uh, who, they should be, who should be reviewing it, whether it's a private work team, mechanical Turk, or a vendor. And then secondly, what you do is you pass that uh, workflow into either Amazon Textract or Amazon Recognition or your own custom model if you want. And so Amazon Recognition is our image uh, moderation uh, service and you can just pass in this workflow on directly and then it'll decide if it needs to route to a human or not. And you'll know in real time whether uh, that specific image was routed to a human or, or not. Uh, let's talk about like, some of the, uh, the conditions that you might want to use in Textract. So Textract is extracting data out of a document. Uh, so one option is that you can send anything that's low confidence to a human to review. So anything that is just low confidence as key value pair will be routed to a human. Next, you can actually specify what fields are important for you. So if you, for example, if a social security number is important for your document, you can say that that's required. And if that field isn't found or if it's low confidence, that will be routed to a human to review. And then finally, you could set it up for random sampling where a portion of your traffic is routed to humans for review. This is really good for auditing your ML algorithm, making sure that it's improving over time. So let's go with an example of what this might look like with TextDAX. So we have this uh, application on the left, and so we send that to TextDAX, and it identifies that the full name is low confidence for some reason. In this case, it looks more like handwriting, so therefore it's lower confidence. So that'll be identified, and then it'll actually be routed to a human for review. And so this is what the uh, human will look like, look at to review the document. There are instructions on the left side of the panel which will tell you how to review, what to review, what they're looking for, and then the actual document that they're processing. And then finally on the right, there's uh, the key value pairs that they're actually tr either uh, correcting or just saying is correct already. Uh, one of the benefits that we've done here is that if you actually click on the the right hand side will highlight the bounding boxes that we got back from Textract. So this is where we can actually help workers be more efficient by actually showing you the information that we got back from the ML model. Um, and with that, I'm gonna actually just demo kind of what this looks like. And so uh, inside of SageMaker, um, we have a new section called Augmented AI on the left, and I'm currently in the Human Review f Workflow section and creating a new Human Review Workflow. Uh, the first thing it needs is a name. Uh, this is a unique name across um, your account. And then secondly, an S3 output path. So this is where the actual inference will be outputted as, as well as the human uh, results. 
And then finally, we need an IAM role um, that has the ability to call Textract, the ability to uh, call uh, A to I, and then also the ability to write back to S3. And then, uh, so we're gonna select Textract as the, um, the service we wanna integrate with. And then we need to decide when to invoke humans for review. Uh, so in this case here, I'm just gonna send all forms to humans and anything between zero and 100% confidence is gonna be routed to a human. So we're gonna have everything show up for humans to review. Uh, I need a, I'm saying I'm gonna use the default template, which is the worker interface that I just shown you a little bit ago. And then um, a task description, I'm just gonna say it's review these documents. And then the default set of instructions are on the left-hand side that the worker will see. And then finally, uh, I'm gonna select uh, the private workforce that I've created before. and. I'll hit create. And so that's gonna create a, a workflow arm for me. Um, and I'm gonna switch over to Jupyter to actually invoke a, um, the analyzed um, documents API and Textract. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a Textract uh, client and an A2I client. Uh, I'll run that. Um, so, and then this is the document that I'll be reviewing here. And, and then so what I do is I'll call uh, Amazon Textracts uh, Analyze Documents API. I'll pass in the document via the, uh, the bucket and the, the file on S3, as well as the human loop config. Uh, requires a unique name for the human loop. And then also the flow definition ARN is the flow definition I just created in the console a minute ago. And so if I run that, it should call Textract, find all the data from Textract, as well as tell me whether a human was necessary to review the document or not. So if I scroll to the bottom of this, um, response, there'll be a section called human loop activation output. And as part of that, there's, um, if a human was necessary to review this document, um, it'll return a human loop ARN, and then it'll also tell you why it was activated. So from this case, in this case, it was because the conditions were evaluated to be true. Uh, and then I'll jump over to the worker portal, uh, hit refresh, and I should see the, the new task and start working on it. And so, like I said before, like we have the ability to like click on uh, the key value pair on the right-hand side, and it'll actually highlight the bounding boxes uh, that the reviewer should be looking at. Um, and then you know, I could either mark this as no adjustment needed, or if for some reason if this was incorrect, or if we always wanted to add a area code to this, we could do that. Uh, the worker hits submit, um, and A to Y will then publish this back to S3 for you, and you can look at the results alongside your uh, AI um, response. Cool. Um, let's talk about now uh, what uh, A to I looks like with recognition. Recognition, we've integrated with the uh, detect moderation label, uh, this API, that's for content moderation. So it can help you determine if there's unsafe content for your audience inside of an image or a video. And so uh, the th Three different ways that you could trigger a uh, review here is either based off of a confidence across all of the labels or across specific labels. Let's say that you, know, you, you care more about gore and violence, you could target that more than you're targeting some of the other ones. And then finally, you can do a random sample where some percentage of traffic will be sent to humans for review. And then similarly to Textract, we have you know, default pre-built UI. Uh, in this case here, the image is shown and then we ask the reviewer to determine if this is safe or unsafe content, and then what other labels might be important for them. And then finally, uh, you can use Amazon A2I with any ML model, and you can call the A2I AI, uh, API directly, and then route tasks to human as you see fit. Uh, just to kind of go back over kind of the key benefits of A2I, it's a fully managed service. Uh, you know, we automatically set up the human review workflow, route it to the right humans, humans can review those tasks, and then we send that data back to S3. Uh, it increases uh, accuracy and lowers costs by only sending the items that need to be reviewed by humans to humans. It greatly reduces the cost of your review. We have pre-built integrations of text and recognition, as well as a bunch of different uh, UI templates for a lot of different various use cases. And then finally, we have support for custom ML models. Uh, getting started is really easy. You can just go to aws.amazon.com slash augmented AI to get started. Uh, the pricing is we only charge if human review is actually needed. Um, and the preview is available in US East, uh, North Virginia, as of Tuesday. 
I'm going to now invite uh, Wasim up to talk more about kind of Ripcord and their use cases of augmented AI. Excellent. Thanks, Mike. So um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Wasim Khan. I'm uh, the Chief Digital Officer of Ripcord. I'm here alongside my uh, colleague, Kevin. We're going to spend the next 20 or so minutes just taking you through, one, what Ripcord does, so we have a better understanding of how we're applying some of the ATI tools. Uh, two, we're actually going to talk to you about how we're actually applying these tools. And then lastly, we want to talk through some actual customer examples of how we see this working. So for us, this is all around extracting value from paper, records, and really getting meaning out of that data as well. So what is Ripcord and what do we actually do? So Ripcord was actually born out of NASA a few, uh, a few years ago. We're based in California. One of our mantras at Ripcord is around using new technology to digitize everything. Um, so there's a lot of data that gets created every day, exabytes of data gets cre created every day. There's a lot of uh, data in paper that's un uh, trapped data. How do you untrap that data? So Ripcord is all about digitizing that data, digitizing that information, making it more accessible. Uh, we're a robotics digitization company that uses both hardware and software, and we provide an integrated service and solution around this. In terms of our actual offering at Ripcord, what we provide, uh, you can really break this down into sort of three component parts. The first part is all around this notion of robotics digitization, but doing it smartly. So here we use robots, actual mechanical robots, use computer vision technology, uh, use high quality cameras, high quality sensors, use smart software in terms of the assembly of digitizing information. Uh, so this is a combination of both hardware and software. We then also have our own software component uh, and here the, the sort of the emphasis is really on you know, indexing, classifying, categorizing information uh, so we can better understand the data that we're working with. So if we can do the first two things in the right way, then that really powers this third uh, component part, which is around enabling data for better processes, whether they're robotic process automation type processes, whether they're just business process uh, type um, uh, solutions or offerings. By having good quality data, it enables us to do a successful job there. So if I look at this from a, a customer lens in terms of what does Ripcord actually provide the end customer, uh, we address business process solutions. So whether they're solutions around uh, loan processing, uh, easier access to records, uh, reconciling uh, revenue from a financial accounting perspective, uh, better access to information to help make better decisions, uh, we are, yeah, they're the typical use case that Ripcord's used for. So very horizontal, but also we're applying these to, to different verticals. Now, the type of data we're also ingesting uh, isn't just straightforward structured data. It varies. There's structured data, there's semi-structured data, be it forms. We also deal with uh, handwriting, uh, very unstructured data, and there's obviously the human processing part, uh, which is why Amazon and A2I is a very good fit for what Ripcord's doing. At the same time, we don't just look at paper to digital. We also look at digital native content as well. Uh, and as you can see down there, we don't just use A2I, we're also using AWS to host our data in the cloud as well. So a number of different ways that Ripcord's applying our solutions in the marketplace. Essentially though, what we're doing at Ripcord, it, it all boils down to sort of the differentiation around the data. Uh, we'll take you through some videos that just sort of highlight exactly what we mean in terms of robotic digitization. Um, so we have a different way of ingesting information, digitizing it, the way we extract information, the key fields, uh, getting structured metadata, uh, that's part of the process, the way we then look at content management. All this leads up to making sure that we've got a very, very strong data uh, offering. And that data offering uh, is in a number of different ways. It's the way we can look at presenting data uh, in different forms to look at the various user experience around accessing that data, uh, accessing that data in a way that it's easy from a user perspective to find information that's very relevant to my business processes. Also connecting with other systems as well uh, to make sure that you know, as, a, as a business user, I'm efficiently using my different applications and also a notion around you know, making sure that data is secure. So this is all absolutely key because if you have good quality data, it ensures that successful business outcomes are more likely. So for us to have good quality data, we need to make sure that we use the right and the best tools available to us. And this is kind of the segue into how we're working with Amazon A2I tools 
to really help us get to that stage of having quality data for these end business processes. So I'm going to invite my uh, colleague Kevin, who's our CTO and co-founder, to tell you more about how we're applying those ATI tools. Over to you. Nice. All right, great. Uh, thanks, Wasim. So uh, my name is Kevin Hall. I'm uh, CTO at Ripcord. Um, and we're going to dive a little deeper now into the technical details of um, how Ripcord uses robotics and machine learning technologies to help uh, turn, turn our customers' uh, document data um, that's currently really trapped in documents or on paper into actionable data that they have available in critical business systems for analytics or connecting the line of business systems um, that are important to them. So the first pillar of technology at Ripcord is um, our ability to uh, use robotic automation to fundamentally improve the scale, speed, and quality that you can uh, digitize uh, paper records. Um, paper records for a long time, for many decades, and even still today, uh, is a common way for, for companies to store data and also to transmit data. Um, but the state of the art in the space for, for a long while was, uh, and, and many other places still today, our hand tools and really a lot of people being thrown at, at the problem. So we've developed this robotic machine and process to first um, uh, find document fasteners and use a robot to uh, remove things like staples, um, look, find sheets of paper, and uh, transfer those then onto a scanner. So you see the, on the left uh, video a scanner uh, we've developed that images at the highest resolution uh, in the industry uh, because really our goal is to uh, or find data uh, in your content. So that really starts with uh, the quality of your input image. So if you think about documents, uh, whether they're paper or digital, um, there's near infinite possibilities for the content that'll be on, on, in the document, as well as the way it's organized and structured from a physical point of view, whether it's different size sheets or uh, things like file folders, document fasteners. Uh, so this is a really challenging um, input to any automated system or any software uh, workflow. So this is really where at Ripcord, uh, machine learning is such an uh, enabling technology uh, for what we do. So just to highlight a number, a couple of different uh, areas that we're leveraging machine learning. Um, fastener localization, sheet segmentation, and anomaly detection are some co computer vision models that we, we leverage and have developed. Um, fastener localization is uh, how we classify uh, different document fasteners like paper clips, staples, um, and guide the robot to remove them. Sheet segmentation is a, another uh, computer vision task to find different sheets of different sizes. Anomaly detection is more of a quality play, uh, really critical for our customers that uh, content isn't obscured. So things like post-it notes and dog ears need to be um, uh, detected. Uh, and then once we actually have the scanned image, uh, we get into the, the more interesting uh, bits from a data point of view. So uh, document classification is really standard for us where we're uh, detecting, um, being able to tell the difference between an invoice, a purchase order, you know, an em employment agreement, um, and get that into the, the same structure that companies are used to organizing their data. Uh, and then similarly, data extraction is really key as well, which is really where uh, Textract is going to come into play. Uh, and where we're going to go with uh, the rest of this presentation. But I think the key thing from this slide to understand is that each one of these use cases uh, can benefit from uh, augmented AI. Um, you know, and we'll uh, get into this here. So at Ripcord, uh, uh, his historically, we've had to support data annotation and review uh, for our ML models internally. So we have an operations team that does uh, the majority of, of the review work. Our engineering team has developed uh, user interfaces uh, and utilities to uh, annotate data and review data. Uh, but the challenge is uh, this work scales up and down, uh, and it's constantly evolving as we come across new projects. Uh, so we know really well uh, the benefit that A2I is going to bring by uh, streamlining this process, allowing you to be open to the different work source uh, uh, use cases as well is really critical. OK, so the main use case we're going to talk about today uh, is for oil and gas documents. Um, if there's one vertical that uh, I think has some of the highest value data trapped on paper still, it's uh, in oil and gas. So um, they're, you know, for over 100 years have been logging data onto paper. Uh, and these companies are looking for ways to get that, that data connected into the modern tools they're leveraging today uh, for oil exploration, exploration and other um, uh, efficiencies within their business. So the problem is, 
uh, this, this uh, high value data is trapped on paper. Um, the content's uh, pretty unstructured. It comes in lots of different formats, large format uh, documents, uh, like maps, well logs, um, and it's variable because it's, it's been logged on paper for uh, nearly 100 years. So there's a lot of quality challenges, and uh, we'll, we'll see this in some of the examples. Uh, and also the traditional methods for scanning and uh, data extraction uh, haven't been able to kind of rise to that occasion. Uh, so uh, because they relied significantly on manual data keying and manual processing. So the ripcord solution uh, in oil and gas is to leverage our robotics, as we mentioned, uh, recognition uh, tools in the central platform, and then Canopy, which is our uh, cloud repository, uh, where we're able to connect that data into their business systems. And I think the key here uh, for this conversation is really around recognition, uh, where we have multiple tools that can all benefit from using uh, A2I uh, as a, a review workforce for any low confidence uh, models. Okay, so we'll dive into some examples here. Uh, so these are a few examples of oil and gas uh, well documents. Um, and I think the key things to be looking for here are um, the types of fields, uh, key value pairs that customers are, are typically wanting to find and extract. Uh, API number is uh, a common one. This is essentially a unique ID for, for a well. And um, you'll, you'll see even here, if you look at the document on the right, there's some handwriting um, and there's also no key uh, for that, that value. Um, the ones on the left uh, do have keys, but also uh, some other complexities um, uh, in the document. We also will look for things like wells or the well name and also uh, field. So I think the key takeaway from these examples is the, the documents are semi-structured. Uh, they have key value pairs, which makes them a really strong candidate for uh, Textract. Um, and they also have a lot of ver variety and uh, challenges associated with the quality, which makes them really a perfect use case for Textract plus A2I. So to get into some of the implementation details, um, you know, uh, I think Mike touched on a few of these setup pieces, but I'll, I'll point out a few things. Uh, step one, uh, the template that you set up is really critical because that's, um, and, and the instructions specifically, uh, for how your workers, when they see a new image, are able to quickly ascertain what value they need to type in or review. So uh, spending time to set up uh, valuable instructions for your, your users is really critical. Uh, this is quite easy to do as well within uh, A2I. Field setup, this is something more specific to Textract. So uh, you set up a condition for um, importing keys uh, from the Textract result. In this case, you see API number. Um, you also need to specify some aliases that maybe um, the, the, the key label um, might have. Uh, and then as well, the confidence thresholds. The flow and work team setup, um, much of this is done through the, can be done through the console. Uh, but this is where you invoke a lot of these um, workflows and work team um, settings. And then finally, um, in a combined call or single call, which I think is really the, the beauty of this combination here, I, you're able to make an analyzed document uh, called a text tract, specify the, the work team that you want to uh, review the documents, and for anything low confidence, um, that'll automatically trigger uh, a task in A2I. Okay, so to get into some examples now. Uh, example one, uh, well first let's, let's look at the, the interface. So on the left side, you'll see some instructions uh, that we've input uh, for these three fields, uh, for API, uh, well name, and field. I like to include a lot of um, examples here uh, for users that are uh, maybe doing the data keying to actually see some, some snips of real fields. Um, you can also uh, link out to more detailed instructions, which for certain document workflows, we certainly see a lot of value in doing that. Um, on the right, you'll see the key value pairs that Textract found, and you'll also see the bounded box uh, uh, in the middle. So in this case, uh, Textract did a great job. It found all, all three uh, fields. Uh, we don't need to take any action, so this document can be automatically uh, uh, passed through and, and submitted. So here's a second example, um, and I wanted to touch on this because I think it, it shows a little bit of the tuning you have to do as part of setup. Um, and ongoing production. So you'll notice it found uh, the, third, the third key value pair successfully, field signal hill, uh, but the API number and the well name uh, weren't found. So one of the first things you can do is look at the actual text tract output and try to figure out why that might have occurred. Um, and in this case, it's simply that the, the key label wasn't uh, uh, present in the important form key alias list. 
Um, so you're able to, to simply kind of add that into uh, that list. In this case, uh, DOG API number. And for the well, it's well number. Um, and this, you'll, you know, this isn't a, there's not an infinite number of key labels. There's usually a, a finite list. Um, once you kind of get into production, you aren't really having to do too much of this work. Uh, but this is a really easy thing to do with, uh, within Textract and, and A2I. And once you have those set up, you'll find that uh, in this case, it, it ran through perfectly. Okay, um, so this is another example um, I wanted to, to go through um, that shows some of the, uh, the types of documents we see. Uh, this, this one in particular is from 1937. Some might call this kind of a worst case scenario um, because you have a lot of challenging content here. You have taped over uh, sheets that are obscuring some of the, the text. Uh, you have handwritten fields, you have fields that are missing uh, keys, um, and you have you know, struck through content, you know, all, all sorts of problems. It's from 1937, so there's uh, you know, faded text, um, really, really challenging document, but I think a perfect example of where A2I is fundamental, uh, fundamentally helpful uh, in this workflow, because your model doesn't have to be robust enough to extract for these sort of edge cases uh, successfully when you can rely on a tool like A2I. So I think I have a little video here just showing uh, this process. So you'll see field is obscured. Uh, if you can look somewhere else in the document and find that successfully, that's great. In this case, we do. Uh, we could type in Huntington Beach there. And then for the API number, uh, this is really where the, the t instructions on the left are critical. Giving some examples where it's handwritten or examples where there's no key label present can really help your user understand um, uh, when it's valid to type in a field, and they can know what a valid format is there. Okay, I wanted to touch on um, the workforce options. So, you know, at Ripcord, we have option, or we uh, see value in all three of these uh, um, workforces. Most of the work we've done today uh, internally is our private workforce, um, and, and those are, um, that's a great option for sensitive data um, and for, for many use cases. Um, but the vendor workforce, we, we see a lot of value in for certain applications to be able to scale um, up and down depending on project requirements. Um, it's not for every use case, but we really uh, are excited about the availability of vendors and the fact that they've already been pre-vetted um, in Amazon Marketplace. And the public workforce as well, you know, more of the traditional mechanical, mechanical Turk uh, workforce we think is, is great for certain use cases. Again, we're, we're able to uh, uh, isolate certain types of data that we really want to send out in high volume. There's a better, uh, uh, from a cost point of view, this is also really advantageous. Uh, lastly, I want to talk a bit about the uh, impact of Amazon A2I and what we see as uh, you know, some of the value that we're going to continue to, to explore. Um, I think the most important is it, it really lo lowers the model's, uh, model's time to production. So you don't have to get it perfect out of the gate. It's really best to get a, a, a pipeline into production um, with this backstop so that you're still outputting the quality uh, results you need, but you're able to learn what your uh, underperforming fields are, what areas you might need to sharpen up. Um, you can then start to layer in other software, other tools to really increase that percent automation, increase your accuracy, um, but really you can get that insight by getting into production sooner. So this is really one of the biggest impacts we see. Um, and you know, from an operational point of view, uh, it'll mitigate a lot of our risk of having to scale up and down work, workforces um, based on data annotation loads that we have coming. All right, with that, I think I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Wasim real quick to talk about what we do uh, with the data. So hopefully what you've realized there is there are a lot of steps and tools to get high quality data. And then what we want to do at Ripcord is take that data and take it to that next level by really marrying it with you know, strong user experience. So one of the examples that we've talked about uh, has been around oil and gas. So we've extracted a lot of you know, high quality information from this specific vertical. Uh, how do I take that information and make it very user friendly for someone to then take that information and understand the context of that information? One such way of doing this and one of the features that we have um, is around using geographic location, geolocation mapping technology, and using that data that Kevin showed us that we've extracted, and sort of overlaying that by actual location. So this is a kind of a simulation that sort of shows some of that.
So basically, as a user, getting that information, uh, the high quality information that we've talked about, and seeing it in this view where it actually helps me do my job better by understanding where that information resides. And if I need to drill down to that next level, understand more, I can have that. It's all an integrated process. And we've used this example in oil and gas, but the same applies in terms of HR, different HR locations where you have different information specific to that uh, specific uh, area. Um, so our view is taking that data as one part, it's a key part, but then using that in terms of the presentment of that data for a business process is also very vital as well. So hopefully that gave you a, a sort of a short snippet in terms of how we're using the various tools uh, to really power uh, data type processes around content management or our business process management. And our view is the whole thing is, is linked. It's a, an integrated approach. You can't just use bad data. You may have to make sure you've got the right tools in place to validate, to extract the right fields, to extract the right information that then power the right business processes. So. I'm going to hand over back to, uh, I think it's Anuj now, uh, to sort of wrap it up. But hopefully that gave you a good snippet in terms of what Ripcord does. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Wasim and Kevin, for sharing that wonderful use case and um, educating our, our customers over here on how they can extract data from the documents, uh, which is a really valuable data in a lot of use cases. Uh, we have a lot of different breakouts related to A2I. Um, we uh, covered or focused a lot on document processing or form data extraction use case. But as we discussed earlier in the session, like this kind of capability of combining humans and machine learning together can be used across multiple industries and multiple use cases like media processing, content moderation, making sure you can trust your ML models and a number of other use cases. We actually have um, a session tomorrow morning where we will have another customer, Widmob, talking about how they are using humans and machine learning together to really harness the power of analytics um, around the video advertising and how they are able to extract a lot of analytics and human emotions and testimonials and that type of data from the video advertising um, or the video ads that they process in their pipeline. With that, uh, we will open up for uh, questions. Uh, just from a bit of a logistical standpoint, there's no mic over here, so we will request uh, you come in the front over here, uh, ask the question. I will be repeating the question so that everyone can hear it in their headset, um, and we can definitely take any questions you have. Um, I will also request my colleague Mike to uh, come over here and answer any questions that you might, uh, guys might have. Okay, so the question is, uh, what is the pricing if you are using uh, Mechanical Turk workforce or vendor workforce? So with Mechanical Turk, like you as a customer have complete control over how, you, how much you want to pay for each individual task, depending on the complexity of the task and depending on how quickly you want the task to be turned around and completed by Mechanical Turk workforce because it's a marketplace um, and the actual completion time and the uh, other details are determined by the market dynamics. That's one thing. In order to use the vendor of workforce option, which is the AWS Marketplace approved vendors, their pricing is listed uh, individually for each vendor on the AWS Marketplace page on which you go and subscribe to the vendor. You can have a look at that pricing and then see how much of workload you will be sending uh, and then try to come at a cost evaluation as per that. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, um, definitely. So the question is, uh, how is Amazon Augmented AI different than um, SageMaker Ground Truth? For those of you who might not know, SageMaker Ground Truth is a product from um, Amazon. Uh, it's very focused on helping you build training data sets to train your machine learning models. And it helps you convert the unstructured data into a very structured data that you can use to then build the machine learning models. Now, 
training data set and getting that data set is the first step in customers' machine learning journey. The second step that we have seen in the customer's machine learning journey is then taking that model and then deploying it into production. And that is where the A2I comes in. So Amazon A2I helps you review the low confidence results or regularly monitor your models that are in production. Uh, A2I is focused in the second or the third step of your ML journey, whereas SageMaker Ground Truth is focused on the first step of your ML journey. Um, I, okay. Thank you. Uh, I got a quick question. Uh, before this uh, example, when you guys map the, the actual tags onto uh, standards, right, as an alias, so when a person were to not match that one or whatever we say, which we are then you actually manually put that word into the test loop, right? And then so that next time, you did automatically train back to uh, the test set. Um, okay, so um, if I hear correctly, I hear kind of two parts of the questions. One is generally how are you defining the aliases and the mapping, uh, defining what are the fields you want to extract out of the document. So that's a feature that uh, is very closely with Amazon, Tech, that's integrated very closely with Amazon Textract. So you as a customer can define that, let's say for example, full name can appear in my documents as full name, name, full name dot, full name colon, and you can define this, can, let's say, dictionary of aliases on which you want to extract the data. The second part of the question, if I understood correctly, is like, can this uh, information can then be used to improve the text tract models in the future? Um, as of now, that capability does not exist, uh, but we would be happy to talk to you offline and uh, actually connect you with the text track team. They would be happy to hear your feedback. to see. That is something we could definitely uh, think about doing in the future. So the question is like, uh, as a customer, do I even have to define the mapping that my full name could appear in different ways in my documents? Um, I would say like about 90% of the features that we build is taken from customer feedback. I would be happy to explore that uh, feedback with you further. And we can definitely uh, explore that in the future as well. Mike, anything to yeah, add on that? Exactly. Thank you. So the question is, is there a mechanism using which you can compare two documents and or you can ask a human reviewer to see document one versus two and probably find out if it's the same document or not. Uh, that's a use case I've definitely heard previously from one of our customers. So some of the things that we did not touch in a lot of detail are you have the capability of customizing the template as you see fit. The templates that we showed over here are only the pre-built templates. So document comparison, video classification, text classification, uh, these are the, some of the templates that we support. We support actually over 70 different pre-built templates that you can just pick up and use in a custom workflow that you want. So document comparison is uh, another template that you can kind of use our pre-built templates as a starting point or you can build your own template. Another kind of thing to keep in mind or just to be aware of when you uh, use the, or kind of build the templates, we use a very standard templating language uh, called as liquid templating language. And we have a bunch of templates that you can see to start on and see like how actually templates are built out. It's really easy for customers to build the templates that's customized to their use case. So, I mean, the short answer is yes, that use case is uh, definitely supported by Amazon Augmented AI. And we're also in the process of putting together a GitHub repository. We'll be able to share a lot more of the examples that we have. Yeah.
yeah, I think we just uh, put the GitHub repository like yesterday itself, and uh, if you search for Amazon Augmented AI sample uh, or task UIs on Google, you should be able to find the link. And that has the actual code for all 70 uh, or 60 templates uh, that are available for you to use. Uh, so if I'm understanding correctly, the question is, can you ask a human reviewer to not only review the machine learning output, but also add some other fields? Is that? Mike, do you want to uh, the, the, that's a really good um, suggestion. You know, we, we've looked at a lot of the TextDirect uh, responses, and there is actually a lot more information in there. Like TextDirect is very good at fetching like words and blocks, and so like we we've looked at potentially improving that by either being able to highlight a section of the the document and then just take that text directly out of TextDirect. So it's it's definitely something that we're considering um, for the future. And that, 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 that data is already in the text direct response, so if you actually do look at the actual response itself, that information is available there. Yeah, so uh, the question is like, can you essentially take the human reviewed results and then use it to improve your model? Um, the question was very focused on handwriting scenario, but essentially it applies to multiple other scenarios as well. Uh, the answer is yes, you can potentially do that. So Amazon A2I gives the human reviewed results back in your S3 bucket. Your client application can use it to make any downstream decision. But you can also use that data to retrain the model that you are using uh, in the next iteration of model improvement as well. So, okay. Uh, so the question is, uh, can you see the reviewer performance by each individual reviewer? Uh, currently, uh, you will not be able to see that. Uh, we do give you individual workers answer so that you have each and every worker's answer and we also will give you a consolidated answer of those different workers. Um, but I think that's a great idea that we can definitely take it into consideration. We, we, well. we will be adding that support. We'll, you will have uh, CloudWatch metrics on how uh, a worker performs, how a work team performs, how a workforce performs, similar to, similarly to how Ground Truth currently exposes that information. Yeah. Okay, was there a second question as well? Okay. <laughs> cool. We have about like one, one and a half minute left. Um, any more questions? Cool. Um, thanks a lot for attending the session. We really appreciate you taking out time to uh, attend this talk. And thanks a lot, Kevin and Wasim, uh, for sharing your use cases as well. Uh, we will be around uh, just over here in case you guys have any other questions or want to discuss your particular use case. Uh, thanks a lot for attending. Thanks.